Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Infinity Client Success uh, Update webinar. Appreciate y'all joining us today. Uh, my name is Steve Kessler, and I'm going to host the program today. Uh, we've got some really exciting uh, uh, stuff to share with all of you this morning. Uh, as y'all know, uh, we're constantly striving to uh, make improvements to the Infinity Workforce Solutions software product, and uh, we're very happy today to give you a first look at uh, some new uh, interface on the system. Same features, but uh, a new interface. So uh, we're very excited to have our guest, Drew Gladden. He's our one of our client success reps, and he's going to, I think, jump on a live site and actually give you a tour and show you and compare uh, uh, old to new. So Drew, if you're all set to go, I'm just going to let this thing get started and uh, uh, show us uh, all the new changes. All right, Steve, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, we are going to jump right into our website here. So uh, we've got a few things that we want to show you guys today. Uh, obviously, we've had a uh, redesign, kind of a facelift for our website. And um, we don't want anybody to panic. Everybody is uh, you know, always a little hesitant when it comes to change and that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's going to be all the stuff that you're already familiar with. There's been uh, some cleanup. You may be familiar with our dashboard screen, for instance. We've had some user interface uh, cleanup there. It's just going to be a little bit easier and quicker to click around on and, and to find what you're looking for. Uh, for your drivers, I'm just going to touch on quickly some things that they can expect to see. You're probably already familiar with our announcements page. Uh, if you've got one of our sites or you've had one of our sites in the past, um, any, any announcements that you need to make, they can go right up there, just like you're used to doing. You can still upload uh, images and everything else. If you've got an employee of the month banner, whatever the case may be, you can still do that through the announcements page. Their classroom is going to look pretty much the same. Uh, you know, we, we want to make sure that the drivers are comfortable using the website. So we've got their assigned completed and certificates all right there for them when they can click through them. Uh, the resources tab, just the same way as it's always been. The mobile app looks a little bit different. Uh, those of you who are familiar with it before know that the, uh, the text was a little bit smaller. The registration code is right there front and center now. Uh, it'll be obviously unique to your company as it's always been. And the drivers can find it right there next to our links for both the Google Play and the App Store. Things that are gonna be different uh, for uh, administrators, uh, we've got a couple of new features rolling out, um, but all the things that you're used to seeing over here are going to be the same. We've got your user lists, still got the search bar right here, add users right here, as it's always been. The design's a little different. Uh, some of the uh, text and fonts and the layout may look a little bit uh, new and fresh to you, and we hope that, uh, that you'll like that. We've also got our groups here, same thing, same functionality that you're used to seeing. Every group that you've got made for your business is still going to be there. Uh, none of that is going to change. The assignments, uh, we've got a couple of updates with those. And uh, so you'll see right here that we've got our view and edit uh, options over here that used to be over on the right. Uh, we've also got deactivate multiple now. So in case you have uh, multiple assignments that you need to deactivate, you can do that right there from the interface. But let's look at new assignments because there's actually something here that I think some of you are going to be very excited about. So let's do a test real quick here. We're going to do a test assignment, not a test, not a TED assignment. Okay. So we're going to pick our start and end dates here. Okay. So that calendar. You're, you're just going to see that it's going to be able to go right to where you want it instead of having to click through two different calendars to get those start and end dates. All of the assignment types and options are just the same as you've always known them. But when we get down here to step two where you add content, things are going to look a little bit different. This is going to be based off of our content library, which has replaced the library that you had previously. This is going to be a little bit easier to search around in. You're not going to have to click and unclick all content and the content description boxes and all of that kind of thing. You'll be able to search through all the content that you have available right here in the search bar. Okay, so if we wanted to find, uh, for instance, uh, driving through work zones. All right, so we're going to type work zones in right there, just like any other search bar that you've ever used on any other website on the internet. 
So we've got a few different things here you're going to notice in our layout for our content. Number one, we've got a preview button right here in the assignment creation side. Okay, that's a new feature. Uh, this used to just be available in the library, but now as you are creating these assignments, if you want to preview that video, you can click on that and it'll bring it right up for you to watch and you'll be able to see that video before you assign it out to your drivers. You'll also be able to click this uh, question mark right here. That's going to show you the quiz as it populates, what the correct answers are, and that'll give you an eye on what your drivers are going to be learning from the content. Okay. Uh, so instead of the box that you used to click in order to add content, you're just going to click the add button and that content's going to show up right up here. Okay. If you want to remove it, click the remove button and it goes away. Okay. So then you're going to click step three, add users and groups. You'll find your user. And we've got that created for our webinar here. We're just going to add him to that content. We're going to go over to notifications. We're going to give him a new and an overdue notification. And then he's going to get a certificate preview. Okay. So that's got him set up. Easy as can be. Uh, just the same as it's always been with a little bit of increased functionality and some, uh, some more user friendliness so that uh, you don't have to jump over to the library if you go, well, maybe I want this video, maybe I don't. Uh, so as far as the assignment templates are concerned, you'll set those up just the same way. It's got the same uh, content library interface as setting up an assignment. And we're going to talk here in a minute about our learning paths. These are based off of our templates. Uh, you'll be able to uh, get in there and basically set up a, uh, a sort of a modular assignment that will be uh, assigned out one piece at a time to your drivers. This is going to be great for new hire orientation, any sort of series of content that you want them to use, even anything recurring uh, that you want drivers to have, you know, spaced out daily, weekly, monthly, whatever the case may be, uh, and that'll keep their classrooms cleaner. It won't dump uh, 45 lesson new hire orientation on them all at once, and then they're going, where do I even start? Uh, but you'll be able to start from step one and work right on through. Everything else is going to be pretty much the same as you've always known it. Custom content, you can still upload right here. You're going to click Add Course. It's going to go through the exact same steps that you're used to with uploading PDFs, YouTube videos, video links from your desktop, whatever the case may be. Uh, you're also going to see the reports down here, the exact same as you've always known them. Uh, they're going to be in the same layout, and you can still uh, download them as an Excel spreadsheet for your convenience. So let's get into our learning path. This is our sort of big new uh, opportunity for, for uh, assignments and that kind of thing. The learning path starts with your templates. I've already set up a few here uh, for this webinar. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to learning pathway here. You're going to click this plus sign, and then you're going to assign a name to your learning pathway. So this is going to be our webinar orientation. Okay. All right. And so then we're going to click next. Now, this is where you're going to select the templates that you've already set up. There's a little bit of uh, front end work on this, but I think overall it's going to save you a lot of headache going forward, okay? Kind of one of those uh, ounce of preparations worth a pound of cure kind of things. So we're going to add our first template here. We're going to go to our new hire orientation step one and add our selected template, okay? Now you're going to select the duration, the number of days that the user is going to have to take the training uh, before it becomes overview. So you can type in here if we want them to have five days, if we want them to have 30, whatever the case may be. You can also use the up arrow to increase or decrease that amount if, you, if you'd rather do it that way. And then you'll just click the green uh, check mark, not question mark box. <laughs> and then you're going to select your users here as well as the start date of the assignment. So let's say we wanted our user to start today. We're going to add our test user here. Okay. All right. So he's in there. Now we're going to go to the uh, add assignment template. And we're going to go to our step two. Okay. You'll add the selected template here. And again, you're going to set the duration of days that the driver has to take this. So let's say that we wanted him to have 30 days to take this one as well. You'll click the green check mark. Now you're going to see triggers pop up down here. The trigger is going to be what, well, triggers the assignment to populate in their classroom. So you're going to click that plus sign and you're going to have some options. 
you can choose from status attempted, status complete. These are both, uh, well, all of the triggers actually are based off of the previous template. So once they've finished that step one, uh, you can set that as complete. If you want them to have step two arrive after they've attempted step one, you can choose that. You can also set a number of days after the start date of step one for step two to trigger, uh, as well as a number of days after attempt and a number of days after completion. All right. So let's say we want them to trigger after that's completed. Okay. So we've got that done. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to add step three. Okay. We're going to add selected template. And you're going to do just the same thing here as you did there. Say if you want them to have that the next month. And then we're going to have that complete after step two becomes completed. So then we're just going to click publish down here. And that's going to appear in the user's classroom. So let's go over here to our user. Actually, I've got him set up here. We're already in his classroom. So you'll see that this is the step one new hire orientation that I just set for him. I've actually already walked him through step one uh, just for purposes of this presentation. Uh, you're going to see that he had some CSA minutes. He can start that class. The video will pop up just the same as any other assignment. Once you're in step two, we're going to click start class here. This is a PDF. So he's going to click start. And the PDF is going to go ahead and pop up here in his classroom. Drivers, please don't drink and drive. Sincerely, the safety department. Okay, so now we're going to click on advanced quiz. Have you reviewed and do you understand the material? We're going to select yes. We're going to click on over to the right. And we've got a completion on that. Okay, so now let's go back to his classroom. And you're going to see that now he has step three here, which is going to be his safe operating procedures. So each of those is going to step right through to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. And you can set multiple assignments per template. Uh, you can give them as big or as small of a, a lesson as you want to. And uh, I think that's going to be really great for cleaning up their classroom. Because before, you would get here and see your basic operations. You would see night driving. You would see um, you know, drug and alcohol awareness or whatever the case may be in their classroom. And that's going to be uh, all cleaned up and ready for them with a little bit of prep work, but overall, not too bad. So, uh, Steve, any questions, concerns, or anything else? I, I can't hear you, Steve. I'm not sure if anyone I'm else. sorry. Never. I forgot to unmute myself. Uh, mm -hmm. One question I have is, is uh, the demonstration you just did, we were selecting a template, and it appears as though there was only one class in the template, can there be multiple uh, classes in one template assignment? Yes, sir, there can. So you can set up those templates any way that you want to. Uh, you, can, you can have any number of pieces of content in there. So if you want them to have, say, our three-part speed and space management series in one of those templates, you can add all three parts to one template. If you want them to have uh, all of their basic operations under one, for instance, that go through uh, the basics of operating a CMV, uh, they'll be able to take all of those as step one and then go on to step two, which may be their uh, OSHA awareness or whatever the case may be. Okay. Uh, we got another question here. Um, will existing templates remain with the new interface or will we need to recreate? All of your templates should still be in there. Uh, any custom content that you've uploaded previously, nothing's going to change as far as that goes on your site. Uh, it's it's not uh, not going to take anything away from you. It'll it'll all be there for you. Okay. Uh, we have a question here. Will the webinar be available to refer to in the future? Uh, I can answer that. Yeah, the the webinar is being recorded, and everybody will be sent an email with a link for the replay. That way, you can share it with others, perhaps that weren't able to join us today. And uh, but uh, just know you'll. I'll be able to see a replay of this uh, demonstration. And of course, if you're a current customer, you can obviously contact your client success rep and they can help you with any questions you might have as you go along. Mm -hmm. uh, another question here uh, for you, Drew. Uh, Tracy is asking, when does this start? So uh, I believe we're going to start rolling out uh, for our demo sites on the 28th. Uh, is the last date that I heard on that. Okay. Uh, we're going to be rolling it out, I think, um, maybe one week at a time to uh, certain clients until we have everybody covered. So, And, and uh, I believe if, if Chuck is in the chat, he may have a 
more concrete date list on that. Uh, Learning Path also will be rolling out next month as well. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be kind of a slow rollout, uh, little bits at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy, I, I would just you know, contact your client service rep, and I think they'll be able to get probably give you a better number on when that that could impact you. So, uh, uh, any other questions? Uh, feel free to type them in the chat or in the question box. Looks like we may have a few more here. Let me uh, scroll down and take a look. Uh, Here's a question from Paul. In the absence of a date for the assignment time frame, will it then be indefinite? Uh, so uh, it will be from uh, whatever the uh, start date that you selected. Um, once they have uh, reached the, if I'm understanding, Paul, you're, you're talking about learning paths. So once you've set up step one, it'll give you that uh, that start date on there. Then it'll have however many days you set for them to take that lesson before it becomes overdue. Only that step will be overdue. Uh, so that'll let you see uh, in your reports where they are on the learning path. OK, so if they're still in step one, two months out or whatever the case may be, they haven't started step two. So it's not going to trigger them to have an overdue assignment on step two, step three, step four, et cetera. OK, OK. Uh, here's a question. On assignments, when you deactivate an assignment, it goes away. Is there a way to get it back? Uh, yeah, yes, there is. Um, I, I don't know if admins have that functionality, but uh, we do here in the client success team. So if you've deactivated one that you need back, uh, just reach out to your rep and we'll be able to uh, turn that back on for you. No, nothing's ever truly deleted. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to get that back for you if need Great. be. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, here's a question from Josh. Uh, will it be possible to set up a learning pathway template and just change the user that it goes to? Uh, so, so yes, uh, you can you can uh, add and remove users from a learning pathway just the same that you can a regular assignment. You can also add groups to them if you have one that you want to send out to your drivers, your warehouse, your mechanics, whatever the case may be. Very good. Uh, here's a question. I guess they're wondering if it's impacting anything else. Will entering driver license permit info change? Uh, no, we'll we'll still be able to track those licenses for you. Uh, if they have a, you know, a, a hazmat license, medical license, something like that that needs to be tracked in the system, we'll still be able to do all of that for you. Yeah, uh, none, none of that uh, none of that's being impacted as at least as far as uh, as far as I know. Very good, very good. Um, any other comments, questions? Uh, one thing I, I do want to just pop up on the screen. I know that we have some, uh, perhaps some previous clients or some uh, folks out there that are kind of kicking the tires maybe and taking a look at us. Uh, if you kind of liked what you saw today and you'd like to learn more about the Infinity Workforce Solutions, uh, you can answer uh, yes to the little poll question that's up on the screen and uh, we'll be happy to have somebody reach out and uh, uh, get in touch with you and tell you a little bit more about it and see if perhaps this is something that uh, would be beneficial in your company. Uh, great presentation, Drew. Uh, it's uh, it's nice to see the improvements. I think everybody out there realizes that uh, with software and us in particular, we're constantly trying to improve the, uh, the functionality, the interface, the usability, the convenience of the site and uh, certainly we're uh, interested in always hearing from our customers so if you see things that you think could improve this by all means uh, let us know get in touch with your client success rep and they will uh, uh, certainly take that information and see if there's uh, uh, some possibility that we can make some more upgrades so uh Having said that, uh, Drew, do you have any final uh, comments or anything that you want to uh, give to our? Uh, oh, wait a minute here. Hang on. We got a couple of more co questions coming in. Got ahead of myself. Sorry. Uh, it says in new assignment, when choosing an assignment, does the information button include a date created or a last date updated so we know how old it is? Uh, in new assignments. So let's, yes. uh, let's take a look over here real quick. Um, so it should show you the start and end date of the assignment. Are you are you talking about uh, 
Um, says, does the information button include a date created or a last date updated so we know how old it is? So you should be able to see that in the uh, in the edit and view panel yeah. right here. You'll see the creation date. Uh, this one uh, was created today, and the last date modified uh, is actually something that we may have to. Oh, this is in draft. That's why. So let's set it back to the default date. Yeah. But uh, yeah. any any of any of your things that are in there already, they'll have an actual last date modified and that kind of thing. Um, but, uh, and yeah, you'll be able to see all of that information through the, uh, through the, through the view or the edit, uh, option. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, question, what is the advantage of a learning path versus multiple trainings within an assignment? Sure. Uh, so the, the learning path, uh, for one, it, it kind of helps you track the progress of the, uh, of the driver through the reports, you know, it'll let you know like which step they're on and that kind of thing. Uh, it'll also, it's going to reduce their headaches a little bit. Um, personally, I've, I've worked for uh, a lot of different companies that have had their training set up a lot of different ways and uh, always the ones that were the easiest and most convenient to do were the ones that had that step-by-step -step process rather than, uh, you know, they, they would sit us in a, a room somewhere on a computer and then you'd go, okay, you're going to do your new hire orientation. And there's 45, 50 lessons that you just kind of have to click through and hope that they're in order. Um, this way, that's going to that's gonna eliminate a lot of that headache for your drivers. You're going to get a lot less calls going, well, which part of this do I need to start on? Where, you know, where do I need to go next? And this, and this kind of thing. Um, it's also going to be helpful for if you have... Um, any quarterly trainings or anything like that that you want to uh, to assign out and kind of have those guys, uh, you know, uh, uh, working on that one piece at a time as opposed to, um, you know, having it um, having it all just already in their classroom. Uh, you can uh, you can have those set out to basically do uh, fire and forget training for uh, anything that you need. If you wanna do a series on uh, drug and alcohol awareness and you want them to have one a week throughout the month, as opposed to just uh, having them all stuck at the beginning of the month where you're always gonna have those drivers who are the go-getters. They're gonna do their training day one of the month and by day 30, they've probably forgotten most of it. So setting those out one week at a time, if you've got four different lessons you want them to do, you can do it that way. Um, and, uh, we're also going to go, uh, you know, more in depth with, with some of that for learning path before the rollout. And we should, I think as well, Steve, um, we're working on a, a kind of a guide for that, for admins that they'll be able to look through and kind of get some tips and, and that kind of thing for it as well. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I saw about the learning path was, you know, I kind of think back even way back to college when you had to take prerequisites you had to take one course before you were allowed to move on to the next one and I think uh, this will easily allow you to do that so you don't have people getting ahead of themselves which would be the case today if you had multiple trainings in one assignment they can take them in any sequence that they want so this allows you to control what sequence they consume the the training content so I think this is a a big uh, big improvement and change uh, here's a question. Uh, would like to see an assignment status report done. Can you run okay. through that, Drew? Yeah, and we've only got a few to show here, but let's just go ahead and go to the assignment status report here. Uh, it's going to take it just a second to populate. You're going to see that uh, we've got, uh, Steve, you've taken a couple of trainings through this, uh, this yeah. webinar site. We've had a couple of other people do so as well, uh, as well as our test user here. So you'll see all the information that you're used to seeing through this, you're going to see uh, the start date of the assignment, the end date of the assignment, uh, you know, what, what duration the content had, when it was completed. Uh, you'll also be able to see their assignment certificate, um, everything, everything that you're used to seeing. And just like before, you can click on more options and export that data as a uh, Excel file. So, yeah. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. Open that up. Oh, it opened on my other screen. <laughs> well, here we go. There we go. Yeah. Everything right there in Excel, just like you're used to seeing. Okay. A few other questions here, uh, maybe a, a bit outside of uh, our uh, updates here, but uh, 
We'll do what I can. <laughs> uh, here's a question. A cool feature, I guess this is a suggestion. A cool feature would be a way to chat in the event that a video doesn't work like a feedback from the drivers, you know, a chat feature, I guess, sort of built into the classroom. Okay. Uh, if they have a yeah. real time kind of. Uh, yeah, I, I know that that's been discussed. Uh, I don't know where that might be if it's on IT's development uh, list, but I don't disagree with you. I think it would be a, a cool feature to be able to communicate perhaps back and forth with the driver actually while they're in the classroom and, and working on something. Uh, Brent has asked, can we set more reminders on each assignments? Uh, are the reminders preset? All right, we're talking about the notifications, I, I think there. Yes, right? I, I'm, so, I believe uh, that's. So, so the way that the notifications are set up is is the same as they have been. You're, you you can set them to give a new notification to the driver, uh, an overdue notification to the driver, a uh, complete notification, uh, well, new and overdue, as well as complete to the admins. Uh, they also uh, can get a reminder set seven days before the due date of the assignment. Uh, but right now, that's the only reminder that goes out. If I'm if if, if I'm answering your question, which I hope I am, um, it's just that one reminder a week before the assignment. Right now. But it's something that we can bring up with IT, and maybe that's something that they can implement going forward. Very good. A uh, couple other questions popping in here, uh, and I think this is uh, uh, Ryan is asking: Is there a way for customers to input custom videos? Yes, there is. Uh, so that's, that's through the custom content feature. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, show you right over here. So uh, through the custom content menu, you can upload uh, video files. If you have one that you guys have made in-house, uh, you can add PDFs. If you've made one, you can add uh, links to YouTube and SCORM and everything else in between. Uh, and it's all right here. Uh, you'll go to add court. Do we have time for me to do a kind of a quick little, it's it's two or three. Yeah, sure, I think so. Uh, so you'll click add course there. You're going to select your content name and description. Okay, we're just going to do a test one right there. You'll click next. And then you're going to click on add content. And that, this is where you're going to select your content name. Okay, we're just doing a test today. So, and then you'll select your media type here. Okay, so that's going to have your video streaming, uh, your PDFs, YouTube, Vimeo. If you want to do a quiz only, you've got SCORM and uh, Video Legacy here. So all of those options for your media type. Once you've selected it, you'll choose your file. And I'm not going to choose a file here on, on the computer that I'm using, but uh, you'll just hit save and that creates the new content. Uh, now you will have to, once it has saved, you'll have to uh, create a quiz to go with it, whether it's just a general acknowledgement, letting uh, letting the driver know, hey, did you understand this content? Yes or no. Uh, you can do true and false questions. You can do multiple choice questions, uh, yes or no questions, and uh, set that up however you want to. We're also happy to do that for you. Uh, if you've got a client success rep, reach out to them. You can email them uh, if the file is too large. They can set up a SharePoint uh, folder for you. You can drop it in there, and then we'll have our guys over in technical production uh, get that up for you. Our turnaround time is usually 15, 20 minutes, maybe, during business hours. And um, we'll set it all up for you. If you've got questions that uh, you want to go with the content, send those over. Make sure we know what the correct answers are. And, uh, and we'll get that going for you, no problem. Hey, uh, a couple other questions here, Drew. Uh, again, uh, uh, Bethany is asking, I've had to unassign someone from an assignment, mm -hmm. but they will still pull up when I run the overdue training report. Mm -hmm. How do we fix this? So uh, now generally once you've, uh, you've unassigned them from, uh, from whatever it is, the reports generally take about an hour to update. That may be what the issue is. Um, and that's, that's one of the things that we actually hear a lot of. I actually answered that question with one of my clients just this morning. She had taken somebody out of one and said, well, they're still on the overdue report or the, you know, whatever uh, report you're pulling. So those do take about an hour to update on the reports. So just, you know, I always had to say, to say be patient, but, you know, um, it, it does just take a little time for those to update. But yeah, it, it will update and, and it'll show the correct information for you. Very good. Uh, so a question here from Tom. 
Uh, he's asking when we'll be able to, when will we be able to click on areas of the dashboard to drill into those who have completed slash not completed? Uh, so in the dashboards, are you talking about uh, just seeing who, who has and hasn't completed their assignments? Um, the, these are more of a, a broad overlook for uh, for the company. Uh, and if uh, and it was Tom, correct? You said, Steve? Yeah, Tom, yeah. Uh, so if I'm understanding your question, you'd like to be able to click on these and see who's overdue and that kind of thing through the dashboards. Uh, unfortunately, that's not a um, that's not a feature that we have available right now. Um, but it has been discussed with our IT department, and uh, they they may be implementing that in the future. Now you can go right into reports right down here, and uh, and get uh, a more in depth look at those right on the dashboard screen. I'm not sure if too many people know this because sometimes we we see that small print down there and we go, oh, I can ignore that. But we do have links right there to the assignment status and assignment detail reports for your company. Very good. Uh, another question here: If a person does not do the training within the assignment date, mm -hmm. does it disappear from the classroom? It does not. Uh, so it will stay in overdue status uh, until they either complete it or uh, their assignments deactivated or the drivers deactivated or whatever the case may be. Uh, it'll still be there for them to take. And uh, if that's something that you want to prompt them to go ahead and complete, they, they can. It's not going to penalize them through our system in any way. It's just a way for you to keep track of who's doing their assignments month to month, to be able to get those overdue reports and that kind of thing. Um, now, we can remove that training from the classroom if, say, uh, somebody hasn't done their training for the, for the previous year or something like that. Uh, we can take all those overdue trainings out if you want us to, or if you want them to you know, come in and sit down and take all of them at some point, uh, you know, on their phone or, or whatever the case may be, they can still take them. It's not going to penalize them a bit. Very good. Thank you, Drew. Mm -hmm. uh, another question here. Do notifications also show as a badge icon slash pop up through the app on a device? Uh, so the notifications aren't uh, aren't going to go through the app. They're either going to come to the driver through email or a text message, depending on how they have their preferences set. Okay. Very good. Uh, I had a question here from Kim is asking, can we upload a PowerPoint? Uh, we do have the capability to do that. Uh, right now, admins, uh, you, you guys, uh, safety directors and that kind of thing, I don't think you've got the option to do that from your end. But if you have a PowerPoint that you want uploaded, we can do that for you. Our technical production department, uh, again, email that PowerPoint to your CSR. We'll get it to technical production. You're looking at maybe a 15, 20 minute turnaround time, um, except for like on the first of the month when we're, you know, Absolutely, uh, <laughs> absolutely slammed with everything. But uh, even then, it's not going to take us very long to get it done. Um, you know, it, yeah, again, if you've got questions that you want to go with it, make sure that we get those and uh, and have those in hand. But uh, yeah, we can upload a PowerPoint for you. No problem at all. Very good. Uh, here's a question. Uh, when will the Spanish subtitles roll out and will it be available on the entire library? Uh, those are coming. I, I don't have a concrete date for you right now, but I know that our video production department has been working on that. Uh, and as far as I know, it will be available on the whole library eventually. Uh, again, I, I'm not sure exactly what their timeline is for that. And I don't know if we have anybody from video production in the chat uh, either, Steve, that may be able to answer that question. I guess my suggestion would be, uh, you know, get with your customer service rep and they can probably give you uh, a little bit uh, more detail about that. Um, question here from Keith. Keith's asking, are you supposed to deactivate assignments after all drivers complete? No, not at all. Uh, those, those assignments can stay there. Um, one, uh, there, there's no limit to the number of assignments that you can have in the system. You, uh, you, you, in, in fact, I would, I would say just from a CSR's perspective that you should not deactivate them once people have finished them, um, because that's going to make it harder to pull records and that kind of thing. So, um, any, any assignment that's been deactivated is not going to show up on reports because the system's not reading it for that, for that purpose. Right. So, so leave those in there. 
Um, and uh, yeah, don't don't uh, don't 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 do that unless it's necessary. <laughs> yeah. Drew, I do believe there's some built-in, excuse me, housekeeping settings about assignments where some of that can be cleared out uh, uh, after a period of time. I, I think my practice site is set for a year and a day. Uh, yeah. So, so so after a year and a day, yeah, there there's sort of a, it's sort of an archive system like you might be yeah. familiar with some other places. Yeah, we can still pull records from them after that uh, expiration date, but but beyond that, yeah, don't uh, don't deactivate it because that makes it harder to find even you know in uh, in uh, previous years uh, assignments and that kind of thing. Very good. Very good. Well, I don't see any other questions. Uh, anybody else out there have a question? Real quick. Uh, uh, once again, uh, Drew, thank you very much. It's great information. I love the way this looks. And I think uh, overall, everybody's going to find it to be even more efficient to use and uh, easier to understand, especially when new people take a look at it. It's much more intuitive, in my opinion. So certainly. The hope. <laughs> thank you. Well, all right. Well, I don't see any other questions coming in. If you think of something after we... Uh, uh, we end the webinar today. By all means, uh, get in touch with your your client success rep, uh, uh, and they can uh, you know get the answer for you. If they don't know it, they know how where to go to uh, uh, to get the answer. So, uh, wait a minute. Uh, one last question just popped in. Uh, Rebecca wants to know what is the difference between draft and assigned. Absolutely. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Uh, so you know, the difference between draft and assigned is that if it's in draft mode, it's not active in anybody's classroom. Uh, it, it's just as though you had, uh, well, drafted a, a, a paper or something that you haven't sent out yet, right? Um, so any changes that you make, if you go in there and you click that edit pencil and you go into that assignment, um, any, if you leave it in draft mode, it's it's not going to assign out. And it, it does that automatically when you go in there to edit unless you click uh, make assignment. OK, so if it's in active status, that means that it is live and that it is going out to drivers uh, and it'll be in their classrooms for them to take. Very good. I think that's a fairly common uh, uh, issue that happens. You can do everything correctly. If you fail to hit the make assignment button, it doesn't go anywhere and stays in draft. Absolutely. And like you said, if you edit, hit that edit button, you have to put the push the make assignment button again. So, and that's not gonna that's not gonna send it out to anybody that's already had it either, because I've had that question from a from a client. Yeah. Which is if I've already sent this assignment out and I went in to make an edit and I click make assignment, is it gonna reassign to everybody? No, it will not. No. It, it's already in whatever state it was in when they had it before. It's just made whatever changes you've made to it. Very good. Very good. All right. Well, uh, I don't see any other questions coming in. So uh, let me say thanks to you, Drew. Great job. Appreciate the, the updates. And uh, uh, for uh, those of you out there, uh, thanks for joining us today. I hope you uh, like what you saw. And uh, we'll certainly uh, keep working on it and try to improve this product as much as we can. So thank you all for joining us today. And uh, look for invitations to uh, future webinars. Uh, we always love having you on. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Drew. Thank you.